Welcome back to the Unity Terrain Basics series, in which I will talk about the basic techniques of designing terrains in Unity using the built-in terrain editor. In this video, we are going to set up the environment, then we are going to look at three of the most basic scoping features. Let's begin. Let's begin setting up the environment. There is a package provided by Unity which offers additional features for terrain editing. Let's go ahead and install it. Go to Toolbar, Window, Package Manager, and from a drop down at the top left corner, select Unity Registry. And from the search box, we can type Terrain Tools. In this series, we will be covering the additional features provided by this Terrain Tools package. Let's hit install and wait for it to complete. With the Terrain Tools package installed, we can begin creating a terrain. To create a terrain, simply right-click on the hierarchy tab, select 3D object, terrain. This will create a terrain mesh as well as a terrain data file, which can be accessed in the project tab. Selecting the terrain object in a hierarchy, and in the inspector we will see two components, the terrain and the terrain collider. The terrain collider will automatically adapt to the shape of the terrain mesh and provide collision between other objects and the terrain mesh. And now we will look at the terrain component. As you can see, there are five tabs. We will discover each of them shortly. At this point, we will first look at the terrain settings. There are numerous configurations. We will focus on the mesh resolution. In this section, there are three main options, the terrain width and length. If we adjust these settings, the terrain becomes larger or smaller. The terrain height is basically a range. It has a default value of 600. That means each vertex can be raised at most 600 units. One thing to pay attention is that when we increase the size of the terrain, the resolution of the mesh remains unchanged. If we increase the width and length, the separation between the vertices will be increased as well, and the terrain mesh will be less detailed. Therefore, if we want to build a large terrain while maintaining the details, it is not a good option to adjust the width and length directly, but instead we should be using neighboring terrains. I'll first refer the settings, so the terrain is 1000 by 1000 in size. To create neighboring terrain, simply click on the first tab. And in the scene view, you will see four adjacent squares appearing next to our terrain. Simply click on the terrain, and a neighboring tile will appear. And they are two separate terrain tiles with different terrain data. If we want to build a large terrain, the recommended approach will be to create multiple neighboring terrains. So we can have a large terrain while the separation between vertices is unchanged. Now we will finally begin editing the shape of the terrain. But first I will introduce a trick. Currently all the tiles are at the bottom. That means we cannot further lower the terrains. So what I would do usually is to use the set height feature down here at the set height controls section. I will just type in a height, for example, 100 and hit flatten all. This will bring all the tiles upward by 100 units. We'll be able to lower the terrain. This is especially useful if you want to add water features like rivers, ocean, and ponds. To raise the terrain, simply choose a brush that you want.
holding down the control key while left clicking will lower the vertices. We can adjust the strength and the size of the brush in the stroke settings here. And some of the brushes have directions. For example, for this M-shaped brush, we can adjust the rotation of it to make it point in a different direction. Usually when I am building the terrains, I will always start with the mountains. Let's start off by choosing an appropriate brush and setting the size and the strength. I will begin with building a ridge. For mountains, there are usually some branches spanning out in all directions. So I will choose a sharper brush and reduce the brush size to create these branches. By reducing the brush strength, I'll be able to edit the shape in a smoother way. And don't forget the sub-branches as well. Now the mountain looks much better. After building the base shape, I will use some special brushes to add additional details onto the mountain surface. Let's also create a lake next to it. We just simply reduce the height. And we can create a river down to that. Later we will add some water to cover this area so it will look more like a lake. We may also use the smooth height feature to smoothen some of the vertices. For example, this edge look quite odd. So we can use the smooth height property to smoothen out this area. That is basically the basic terrain sculpting techniques. In the next episode, we'll be looking at some additional brushes as well as painting the terrain. I'm Yellow Flicker and I will see you in the next video. Stay tuned.